So we're quite um, pleased that um, uh, whatever's going to happen within the system uh, right now, without knowing what's going to happen with temperature, uh, will be an improvement to aquatic habitat. Um, and as I said, uh, with respect to the Water Reclamation Centre providing um, these high water levels, the benefit is, is going to be pronounced in the summer, uh, low flow period. Um, there'll be very little benefit uh, during the higher water levels because uh, essentially uh, the, the, the water's already up. But uh, during that low flow period, it's going to mean that these amphibians, reptiles, young fish, minnows, and benthic invertebrates can get into areas where they couldn't get into before. So it just increases the habitat. So. Um, I mentioned the outstanding study. We're waiting on the results um, with respect to uh, the geomorphology or stream bank erosion. It's the only other one that um, uh, we're waiting on besides the temperature. Uh, the concern obviously there is that if there's a lot of erosion within the system associated with the new discharge, that um, there could be problems with the, um, the dikes and it could destroy habitat. Um, so we're waiting to see what the results are from, uh, from those studies. So. We've been assured that we'll get them in a relatively timely fashion. I know they're working on them now, but we still haven't got a, a, a time of arrival for when they'll show up. But again, we will, we will review that information. We will provide the information out to uh, uh, the public uh, uh, in a transparent fashion. So. so based on our review right now, staff uh, are, are not seeing any negative impacts associated with the creation of the new plant, with the exception potentially of the temperature in the winter months. So uh, we are waiting on those two additional studies, and uh, we'll be reporting back um, to you when we get the uh, studies and we've reviewed them and have those results. So, so we'll be more than happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mike. Questions from committee members? Councillor Eaton. Yes, thank you very much for the presentation. That cleared up a lot of issues that I know that I've been hearing for the last basically year, year and a half that residents and and staff and council has been concerned about. Just one question, uh, with regards to the water reclamation, there has been discussions about the water being reused for uh, sod farms, farmers, etc. What percentage of that would be used that won't be going into the Holland River? Because we've, we've heard the positive impact of potentially this water going into the river, but if it, was started, if, if it wasn't going into the river and it was being taken a, ahead of time, um, then we wouldn't be seeing these positive impacts. It, it's hard to predict at this point. Uh, the authority did undertake a study looking at water reuse uh, in 2010. Um, there certainly is uh, a lot of clients that could use the water. Um, and again, you're absolutely right. If we're going to use all the water in the summer periods, then the benefit that we would be see uh, from, from that water going into the, uh, the river would be negated somewhat. Uh, it, I can't presume at this point. Um, I, I think what's going to have to happen is uh, the, the, the region is going to have to do a little more work looking at the water reuse option. I know that's uh, in the works for the next stage of the environmental assessment process. And they'll have to actually start going out and contacting some of the landowners to see um, whether or not they would be willing to actually take the water. They'll have to cost the infrastructure associated with providing that water to them. But um, in our discussions, when we did our study, the, um, uh, the Sod Farmers Association, for example, they would be more than happy to have a constant source of water which they could use, um, and they probably would use it in conditions like uh, we have right now uh, every day. So it, it could be quite extensive. Um, currently, a lot of them are drawing water from the, the, the rivers or from the ground, and that's not good because they're essentially using that uh, water, and uh, we've had issues with the Maskinage River actually drying up in the summer uh, because of uh, increased water use and just uh, uh, no rainfall. So. Um, there could be a benefit to that local ecosystem by providing the water reuse to those folks. Councillor Roy DiClemente. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I did want to extend my thanks to the Conservation Authority and to, and to you, Mr. Walters, for being here today and provi providing this information to us. I think it's been tremendously helpful. Uh, I guess my questions are, are along the lines of what if. Uh, the two reports that are outstanding uh, the uh, geomorphology and the, the report on the ice formation. If those identify issues for the Conservation Authority, what, what sorts of things could the project team put in place to address them? So for example, uh, if, the, I, if there will be problems with ice formation, what sorts of things can they do? Uh, can they cool the water before they put it in? Or what, what sorts of things are, are, are uh, potential uh, resolutions to those issues? 
<coughs> through you, Madam Chair. That would be up to the region. There are, that we would be looking at them to, to mitigate those impacts, number one. They would have to. So if there's no ice formation uh, on the river, if they can't cool the water, then maybe they can provide an alternate snowmobile trail that people would use and, and sign the area appropriately that it's thin ice. Um, but again, that'll be up to the region as the proponent to actually decide what type of measures um, they would employ. Um, with respect to the, um, uh, the erosion, there's, uh, there's uh, ways in which they can release the water. They can time the release so that um, it happens and doesn't impact on the uh, geomorphology of the river. Um, or if the water reuse option goes ahead, um, definitely. And we'll have to be looking at all the different types of discharge. So from 40 million, say that 20 million is being used for water reuse, we'll have to look at what the 20 million will be. So it's, it's hard to um, speculate at this time until we actually see the, the data and the results. But we would expect the region to mitigate those impacts or then uh, we would have to uh, uh, voice our concern at the time when the EA is uh, tabled. Councillor Morton. Um, thank you. <clears throat> Through you, uh, Madam Mayor, to uh, Mike, thank you very much for the, the presentation. It has cleared up some, I'm certainly uh, sure that there are some questions that probably will still be outstanding. And, and forgive me, I um, did go through this report over the weekend and wrote down a number of questions. So if I repeat something that you have uh, already answered, just say I already did that. Um, but the first question I do want, and whether it's you or whether it's Mayor Haxon as our regional rep, can answer for me. Um, remind me when the region accepted this as the preferred um, area, alternative. Uh, I believe it was in 2011 okay. that um, uh, they had finally announced that um, it was uh, being conceived as the preferred alternative again. Um, the best thing to do would be go back to the uh, proponent, the regional team themselves, and, and ask that question. But I do believe it was uh, uh, 2000, late 2011 that it came forward I that this was. I just find my notes at, at home over the weekend. Which leads me into another question. Um, the preferred sites, or at least the, the, the four preferred sites right at the moment, are in an area where we as council have not reviewed ROP yet and those lands are not in the growth, the projected growth plan right now. I mean, we're hoping that at some point they may be. So um, I guess my question here is why would those lands be um, considered and what is the time frame for the build out of this water reclamation center? Uh, through you, Madam Chair. The, um, the siting of the uh, facility, um, we have not been involved in any great degree other than to provide the region with the information that we have on hazard lands with respect to the actual locations, the sites. Our biggest concern was the discharge point um, into the river system. Um, with that said, um, I, again, I, the best person to answer the question would be someone from the region. Uh, the build out, um, you're talking um, quite a ways into the future. The, the plant can be phased, and that was one of the benefits of going with this solution versus building the um, uh, tunnel all the way down to uh, Lake Ontario and the Duffins Creek uh, plant, is that this facility can be phased over time. There's no savings in money, is my understanding. Both facilities cost roughly the same, but this one can be phased based on growth as it occurs um, so that they can uh, gear up the plant as more growth comes online. So it could be anywhere, um, again, I'd be speculating, uh, the time window that uh, we've been told is uh, anywhere from 10 to 50 years before the, uh, the population builds out. And again, there's the planning issues that have to be resolved first. Um, and, and certainly um, uh, that, that has a lot of uh, impact on when uh, the facility will be constructed. Thank you. 